This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, happy Friday. This week, Sony gave us a fascinating look at the future of smartphone camera technologies. We got to see exactly how Oppo and OnePlus rebrand phones and Google changed their video calling strategy once again. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. Okay, my release highlights this week start with the Pixel 7 that popped up month before its official release on eBay with a photo of it taken by another Pixel 7 Pro, apparently. The listing is gone now, but the person who put it up said that they bought the Pixel 7 from a wholesaler, which uh, probably nobody believes. Anyway, we didn't learn a whole lot new given that Google had already announced these phones, but Google did apparently figure out which devices these were, possibly based on the prototype markings on the back, and wiped them remotely. Also this week, Microsoft released a pretty weak update in the form of the Surface Laptop Go 2, bumping its CPU up to Intel's 11th gen and adding a fingerprint sensor on the power button, but the laptop now starts at $600. The design is beautiful as ever, but that's a pretty steep price for low-end spec. And our final release this week is that the USA now has the world's biggest supercomputer again. Well, maybe. See, the Oak Ridge National Laboratory has a new system called Frontier that has broken into exascale realms using 9,400 AMD powered nodes as well as 40 megawatts of power. But China is rumored to have two exascale systems of their own already, except they refuse to share benchmark data on them due to the current state of semiconductor politics. Oh well. Okay, my first story of the week is going to be a super interesting timeline that Sony, the world's largest and leading image sensor maker, shared with us about what they think the image sensor market will look like until about 2030. TechRadar dug up that the CEO of Sony Semiconductor Solutions, the company that makes most high-end image sensors, said that, quote, we expect that still images from smartphones will exceed the image quality of single-lens reflex cameras, and specifically by 2024, which is surprisingly soon. Some of the really fascinating slides include these, which show that Sony sees sensor sizes doubling by 2024 in high-end phone models, and that they also see the business size itself grow by about 10% per year, mostly on the back of high-end models. And then there was this slide, which predicted what technologies will improve the most until 2030. Apparently, it's mainly AI processing, faster sensors that can do multi-frame readouts, and folded optics, also known as periscope lenses. But the company also expects Super HDR and, quote, high quantum saturation technology to become a thing. And these are all things that already exist, but I guess they'll just get better over time. The new thing here to me is quantum saturation, which I have never heard before. Google didn't tell me what it is, but Sony, apart from that, also teased a new concrete upcoming technology that they are really hopeful for. It's called a two-layer transistor pixel technology, which the company believes will deliver big advantages, especially for small sensors. So on a normal CMOS camera sensor for each pixel, you have two things. One is called a photodiode and the other is called a pixel transistor. And I won't explain what each of them do here, but importantly, they are traditionally both on the same substrate layer sharing space. Sony's new approach is to put each of those on separate layers and to then stack the two layers on top of each other. This this way you can get way more out of the same area because you're basically using it twice and the two layers can each be made with custom materials and processes instead of both having to be made the same way. As you can imagine, the tricky thing here is that you have to take two layers and then you have to match them up exactly correctly so that 50 megapixels or whatever on both sides all match up perfectly. There's like a nanoscale level problem. It's, I guess, hugely difficult, but Sony says that they're actually on track to doing it. And they're constantly technologies like these or the variable zoom lenses inside the latest Xperia phone that one by one chip away at the reasons for why you would need a big camera in the first place, which is why Sony thinks that by 2024 they should catch up, at least when it comes to taking photos. Now, of course, videos will be much harder as you have tons of data to work with, way more than you have with photos, and I'm sure that there are plenty of use cases where having a big dedicated camera will still make a lot of sense, but it's still really interesting to get such a concrete timeline, especially from a company that makes both both the sensors for our smartphones and our big cameras. 
Okay, and my second story of the week is going to be a funny one showing exactly how Oppo and OnePlus actually share phones using an FCC filing. So Android Authority found a filing for a 4G OnePlus phone with a letter from Oppo that explains that this handset is actually identical to a previously disclosed Oppo device and that OnePlus wishes to quote market this product under their own company name. And then another letter that explains the list of changes which include changing the battery cover to reflect the OnePlus logo, switching to a red USB cable, removing the headset, switching to a 50 megapixel and 2 megapixel rear camera system, and adopting Oxygen OS 12.1. In terms of processor, for example, another letter says that the product is quote electronically slash electrically identical to the original equipment, with all the test results that phones need to undertake for FCC approval being the same as the already approved Oppo A57 4G. Now, this is not a rant or anything, I just find it kind of interesting and also pretty funny that we finally see this rebranding process happening in real life. Okay, and my final story of the week is going to be Google yet again changing the strategy on messaging and video calling for what feels like the hundredth time. So the news is that Google will port all of the features of Meet over to Duo and then will rename the Duo app to Meet. Google says it will do this to make one connected solution and also to have one experience for everyone. Which is funny because they have merged and unmerged the same apps endless times before just hoping for a change. And in my head, I just picture this exact meme playing out at Google headquarters every second week or so. A new Google executive comes and says, hey, what if we merged all of our calling and chatting apps into one? Genius, right? And then some poor Google intern says, but sir, we've already tried that 43 times before. And then the intern is just thrown out of the window and then they just do it anyway. I mean, Duo is pre-installed on every Google certified Android phone and has apparently hit 5 billion installs while Meet is not and both services are actually pretty good, so this isn't like a bad idea inherently, but just make up your mind already and stick with a plan, Google. Now, maybe if Google employees would just stop for a second and take a deep breath, they could actually build a great suite of apps if only they took some courses over on Brilliant. Logic, scientific thinking, computer science, and other engineering topics are all courses that Brilliant offers whether you are a Google engineer or whether you just want to start earning like one. Brilliant's courses are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals, and they cover topics from beginner to advanced levels. The thing that makes Brilliant unique and great is the interactive style of teaching that engages you and also the way their courses are structured. Courses help you learn by breaking down a complicated concept into small chunks and then you do an exercise after each one so you practice what was just explained right away. That process means that everything just goes deeper into your brain as you apply the new idea, not just think about it, and that ends up building real competency. This way you can get better at a job or you can get a new job altogether or you just get smarter about your choices like some people at Google clearly need to get. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org tfc and the first 200 people who sign up will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next week.